Hi, I'm Heather. And this is Jax. Welcome to Ask AI. Ask AI is a podcast dedicated to artificial intelligence. Finding out what artificial intelligence even means. We're going to learn as we go. Let's talk AI. Today, we're really excited to welcome aboard Dr. Alyssa Strom, the Executive Director of the CFARS Pan-Canadian AI Strategy here in the studio with us to talk about artificial intelligence across Canada, what's being done to build up the ecosystems, and also why AI is a big part of Canada's research scene, because the Canadian Institute for Advancing Research played a massive part in that. So without further ado, Dr. Strom, in your own words, could you explain to us what the Pan-Canadian Strategy really is in artificial intelligence today? Sure. Thanks very much for having me today. So the Pan-Canadian AI strategy is an investment that the federal government made last year in Canadian AI research. It was a $125 million investment over five years to really create an incredibly strong research ecosystem of AI researchers in Canada and really building on the existing strengths that we had and forge up that system so that it could be even stronger. So there are a few key elements of the strategy. First and foremost, we wanted to create three major centers of excellence of AI research in Canada, and these are distributed across the country based in research centers in Toronto, Edmonton, and Montreal. And those three centers were chosen because of the existing strengths that we have in AI research in those three cities. Over the last 20 years, some really phenomenal researchers at each of those three places have been leading the development of what are now the leading edge AI technologies. So clusters of research teams have really built up around those individuals. And so they seemed like the natural place to build centers of excellence for AI research in Canada. So those centers are Amy in Edmonton, which is the Alberta Machine Intelligence Institute, the Vector Institute here in Toronto, and Mila in Montreal. And I've been working really closely with the research teams and the scientific leaders of each of those three institutes to help establish the institutes. Uh, And right now they're really, really focused on recruiting great talent, great researchers, and great leaders and partners uh, to their ecosystem systems. So the second part of the strategy is actually designed to really support and enhance that talent recruitment strategy. It's the Canada CIFAR Chairs in AI program. And that program allocates uh, funding to be able to support about 50 research chairs across the country. And these will be people that are already the leading researchers in the field who exist in Canada, but we're also really focused on recruiting some of the leading researchers from around the world. About half of the researchers that we recruit will be people who are either coming back to Canada or coming to Canada for the first time. And so the Research Chairs Program will provide salary support, but also uh, direct research support for those individuals, including funding for their graduate students and postdoctoral fellows. So we're hoping that over the next 12 months or so, we'll have a really, really strong cohort of Canada CIFAR Chairs in AI distributed across the country. And these people will be at the leading edge of AI research. The third element of the program is a series of national program of activities, and this is really meant to provide uh, opportunities for research exchange and collaboration and coordination really across the country. And so we're planning a series of conferences, workshops, and summer schools to bring researchers together on particular topics, looking at, for instance, AI applied to specific domains of science, uh, running summer schools for students across the country so that graduate students and even younger students can get exposed to artificial intelligence and machine learning approaches. Um, And also we will run in December this year, a national conference for the entire pan-Canadian AI strategy. Uh, And we're going to be hosting that in Montreal in December. The last element of the strategy uh, is something that we're really excited about at CIFAR, which is the AI and Society program. And this is more of a traditional CIFAR program uh, in that it's designed to bring together thought leaders from around the world. Uh, So it's an international program to look at the social, legal, ethical, and policy implications of AI. And we'll be running a series of workshops and policy labs on particular topics within that domain. So in fact, we just launched a call for proposals for workshops in AI and society, and we're looking for research teams to come together around the world to address particular topics with respect to the policy, legal, and ethical implications of AI, 
and the call for proposals closes on May 29th. So we're really hoping that uh, people will come together and put together strong proposals. That workshop call for proposals, what do you think that you and your colleagues are really expecting to see out of that? I mean, how can people get involved? How can they really contribute? Yeah, absolutely. So we're getting a lot of interest in that program and we're seeing teams come together. They have to be led by at least one Canadian, but we are seeing groups of researchers from around the world come together to look at topics around policy questions. But of course, other hot topics are ethics and and legal implications of AI as well too. So we're hoping to be able to run a series of workshops that touch on and address all of the issues that are really at the forefront of AI and society. I love that a portion of the pan-Canadian AI strategy funding is going towards AI and society. I think that that really plays to the story of how, um, as a country, we're looking at not only advancing the research side from a technical perspective, but also from more of an interdisciplinary perspective. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, Canada played such a leadership role in developing the algorithms and technology and approaches that we're now seeing being adopted everywhere in AI. And so I think we have a responsibility as well to make sure that we're at the forefront of the conversation around the policy, legal, social, ethical implications as well, too. I feel like that's a great segue into talking about CIFAR's history with artificial intelligence in Canada. Can you share with our listeners some of the reasons why a lot of these researchers are here up north? Yeah, absolutely. So it's a really, really interesting story. I just joined CIFAR in January, but one of the things that I found really, really impressive about CIFAR is that they've actually been supporting AI research in Canada and internationally since 1983. Uh, So the very first program that CIFAR launched in 1983, research program that we launched in 1983, was called Artificial Intelligence, Robotics, and Society. And so CIFAR has a long track record of funding leading edge research in all different fields, but we particularly have a strong track record in AI. The research that we know and love today that is really being applied and is really changing the way we as citizens engage with technology really began in about 2004. In 2004, CIFAR launched a research program which at the time was called Neural Computation and Adaptive Perception and today is called Learning in Machines and Brains. And that program was launched by Jeff Hinton. And so uh, most people will have heard of Jeff Hinton. He's sort of widely known as the godfather of AI. So he was really recruited to Canada and he was a computer science professor who had some really interesting ideas about thinking about how we could model the way that machines and computers think after the human brain. So he wanted to work with neuroscientists and bring neuroscientists and computer scientists together to understand how the human brain learns and try to adapt those approaches to computer science. And that was the foundation for the NCAP program. And today, as I said, it's learning in machines and brains. So Jeff was actually the director of that program for 10 years. And through the course of that 10 years, uh, he brought together some of the world's leading researchers. Many of them came to Canada or stayed in Canada or were already in Canada to start to think about this idea of deep convolutional neural networks and how it could be applied to manage and uh, analyze and work with large, very, very large data sets. And so it was the breakthroughs of Jeff Hinton and his colleagues and many members of the LMB team that uh, allowed us to now have the types of uh, machine learning approaches that we have today. Uh, And that program today, in fact, is still one of our most active research programs in CIFAR. It's got 41 members, which is very large for a CIFAR program. It's very, very international in nature. Uh, And today it's actually co-led by Yashua Bengio, who is the scientific director of MILA, the Research Institute in Montreal, and Jan LeCun, who's the director of AI research at Facebook. And it's a very, very active group and very, very collaborative and interactive group as well. It's amazing. Some of your other 41 members are major leading researchers in the field too. Like is Andrew Ng still? Yeah, absolutely. So all of, all of the biggest names that you know of in AI have been part of the Learning in Machines and Brains program over the course of its history. So it's been a sort of a tremendous contribution that CIFAR has been able to make to this community. You pursued your PhD out West, right? Neuroscience at University of British Columbia. So with a neuroscience background, it must be really interesting for you to now be seeing all the the merging of these different types of fields. Can you speak about what you personally find really exciting about where artificial intelligence is today? And on the other hand, is there a 
big misconception that you see the general public having with the technology? Yeah, that's a great question. It's something that I've been really impressed by actually in my time in this role. So the three AI institutes are actually working incredibly collaboratively together. So we're very much integrated and are working together to make sure that the pan-Canadian AI strategy truly is a national effort and has a national impact. So we have regular meetings. Uh, We're supporting uh, interaction and exchange of researchers across the three institutes. And one of the programs within the pan-Canadian AI strategy, the national program of activities will actually allow for exchange of researchers for students and postdocs and faculty members, in fact, to go across the three institutes so that we can learn from each other and make sure that we're sharing the latest advances in the field. Uh, The National Program of Activities will also engage researchers outside of those three major centres as well too. Our program will be open to researchers in Vancouver and Halifax, uh, researchers uh, from across the country who are interested in AI and want to collaborate and contribute to the program. One of the areas that's really interesting that I visited recently was Vancouver. Uh, So there's a very strong AI research group in Vancouver, both at UBC and SFU, and great research at both of the universities, but also an incredibly strong startup scene, which is really sort of built on the gaming industry in Vancouver that has a long, long history there. We're now starting to see a really, really strong AI startup scene being built in Vancouver and great attraction for companies and hopefully soon for deeper investment as well in those companies. That's incredible. I mean, one of the questions I want to ask is so much of this conversation does certainly seem to be happening in Toronto, Montreal in particular, um, and those cities are pointed out. I wanted to ask, how would you find that those cities are actually being able to work together and not simply, you know, build up their own empires and even beyond those cities, what is happening? I'll start with the areas that I'm really excited about. And certainly as a scientist, I see there's huge opportunity across so many disciplines to apply machine learning to really allow us to get deeper insights in so many different disciplines of science. Um, and to really make a difference in people's lives. And I think that's what a lot of people haven't quite understood yet. I think what excites me most is in the area of healthcare in particular, knowing that we have these machine learning technologies and algorithms and approaches that we can apply to massive health data sets or to use computer vision to apply to to, uh, healthcare imaging as, as an example. There's tremendous opportunity for improved quality of life, improved healthcare, and to really make a difference in individuals' lives. And so I'm really excited about that. The other area that I think I'm personally most excited by is autonomous vehicles. And, you know, I think that's an area that there is a bit of a misconception about. So it's an area that I'm both excited about, but I think we have a lot more education to do. Motor vehicle accidents are one of the number one causes of death and injury in the world. And, you know, as a parent of young children, it's something I worry about every day as I watch my kids cross a busy street. And I think there's so much opportunity for improved safety, improved efficiency, and also less impact on the environment as well. And so autonomous vehicles, I think, is going to make a great contribution to our lives and to our society. Uh, And yet it's something that people don't really understand what the technology is and, and what the opportunity is. And so I think it's something we need to do a better job of educating the public about. I think in general, as far as educating the public, I think we have a responsibility to let people know sort of what AI technology really is capable of today and what is actually science fiction. So uh, there's a lot of talk, for instance, around killer robots and the robots taking over. Um, And I, I really feel, and in talking to leading AI experts across the country, you know, the sentiment is that 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 kind of technology is a long way away. We're not anywhere near uh, robots being able to actually make decisions for themselves and be completely autonomous and and take over the world. And before that actually happens, we'll have a lot of warming and we'll have a lot of time to be able to put in the systems and regulations and processes to prevent it. So um, it's a bit of uh, hype in the media, I think, around AI actually is and what robots can actually do. Um, And I think that... uh, you know, we need to be talking about that more uh, in our dinner conversations at the pub and, you know, with our, with our family and friends. So completely agree with you. Terminator is probably not quite around the corner. That being said, though, I mean, all of these AI algorithms and models, they do need data to operate. And there is a lot of concern right now in society and in the media, quite rightfully so about, for example, you know, Facebook and Cambridge Analytica, the dramatic misuse of data, misappropriation of data. So wondering about that kind of conversation, if you think that there may be 
is a regulatory piece that needs to be happening in parallel with all of this AI technological development, some of the conversations that may be happening and how that fits into the Pan-Canadian AI strategy? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a critical piece of the puzzle. So we, we wouldn't have the technologies that we have today, the AI technologies and machine learning technologies, if we didn't have data. Data is an essential piece of the puzzle. Um, but if we start talking about personal data or personally identifiable data, that's when we start getting into privacy and, and security and, and ethical issues as well too. And so that conversation absolutely has to be ha- happening hand in hand as the technology develops. And so certainly in the uh, in CIFAR and the AI and Society program, we will be talking about those issues. And uh, we are working with both the Canadian government and governments around the world to uh, help to identify best practices, some baseline understanding on how governments can approach regulation, um, how governments can uh, start to think about what's the legislation necessary to be able to protect citizens uh, when we're talking about uh, privacy and ethical issues around data. So those conversations are happening and uh, I, I think Canada has a great opportunity actually to play a leading role and we're helping to facilitate that. That's so awesome. All the aspects of the Pan-Canadian strategy that you're overseeing and that's being worked on what in particular is the big motivator for you when you're, when you're thinking about the task that you have of being the executive director of this very important program, why are you really excited and what are you hoping to achieve this coming year? Yeah, great question. So I'm a scientist at heart and by nature, and um, I'm a passionate advocate for research in in all disciplines, and I have been my entire career. When I saw the opportunity to be part of this program and to be part of CIFAR and to work with researchers across the country on this initiative, it was irresistible for me. Uh, I saw such a tremendous opportunity to be part of a really, really important national program. It's important for our researchers because it will bring them the resources and opportunities that they need to really develop technologies and approaches that are going to make a difference in people's lives. It's important to young people who are trying to develop skills so that they can go out and get great jobs in this field. Uh, And it's really, really important for Canada. So the opportunity to have really significant social benefits for Canadians economic benefits for Canada and play a, a major role on the world stage in this field uh, is, is uh, just a, a great opportunity for Canada. And for me, it was a great opportunity to be part of that ecosystem. What I think what I'm most excited about uh, in the year ahead is starting to name uh, some of the Canada CIFAR chairs in AI. So this has been my number one priority since I've been on the job for the last few months. And I've been working with the three I institutes as they are really trying to recruit uh, some of the great leaders in the field, some of the young researchers who are just graduating with PhDs from great institutions around the world, some researchers who are in corporate research labs right now around the world that we'd love to bring to Canada. And so we have a really, really exciting opportunity to bring great researchers, deep expertise in AI, great researchers who want to apply AI to lots of different scientific and technical domains. And uh, we really hope to be able to name almost the full cohort within the next 12 months. And so we'll have, you know, a great team of researchers in Canada leading this program and uh, really, really embarking on a phenomenal research program. So really excited about that. That's so exciting. And I feel like right now in the world at this time, I mean, it's, it's such an opportune moment for us to be bringing in some of the best talent in the world. And I think I've seen us in Bloomberg and the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal, but just how many top AI researchers in particular, it's been in, you know, the dozens, if not more, Um, who've all come up here. And I believe that CIFAR is playing a large part in that. Absolutely. And, you know, I think that it's actually the perfect time for Canada to be recruiting people from around the world. You know, we see a lot in the media right now about how inflated the salaries are in this field. Our pan-Canadian AI strategy is going to have a hard time competing with the likes of Amazon and Google, but we don't have to necessarily compete on salary. We're going to we're going to do our best beyond just uh, a research. The fact that Canada is such an open democracy with great values, great livable cities, and that we have so many of the world's leading researchers already in this field here researchers, young researchers, graduate students, postdocs, and senior researchers as well are showing a great deal of interest in coming to Canada. So we're really excited about that. So as we're just wrapping up the conversation, is there anything that you would like to add for our listeners to think about as they think about AI here in Canada? Yeah, I think that this is a field that's going to evolve very quickly. And uh, one of the things that we all have to be aware of is that the technology will, will change very quickly. And as citizens, I think it's important to be aware of of how your data may be used and how you're authorizing your data to be used. And I think that's a conversation that we'll 
continue to have and that will uh, expand beyond just a research question or a policy question. I think it needs to be uh, a deeper question and, and have citizens fully engaged in it. One of the areas that we're working on actually is the Montreal Declaration for Responsible Use of AI. Awesome. And so uh, we're working with the team in Montreal that has developed these recommendations really around how AI can be used responsibly and is engaging with citizens on that. And so it's really very much a grassroots movement. It's open to all members of society to contribute to that. And CIFAR will be working with the Montreal Declaration team to start to bring some of that consultation, some of the workshops, some of the open processes to cities outside of Montreal and expanding it across the country. So I'm really excited about that and people should keep their eyes open. That's truly exciting. And for the listeners, where is best to follow you and your work at CIFAR? So our website is a a great source of information. My colleague, our president, Dr. Alan Bernstein, is a great great fan of Twitter. So you'll see him tweeting about the Pan-Canadian AI strategy. And I think the AI Institutes as well is another great place. Last but not least, actually, this is probably the best place for listeners to go, uh, is a web platform called Canada.ai. It's in fact the place that I use to sort of curate all the uh, many, many, many articles that come out in the media, on websites around what's new, what's hot, what's happening in AI in Canada. And the team there is doing a great job of curating uh, the news, as well as providing new tools and resources to help us find what we're looking for in AI as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Alyssa. Thank you so much. Great. It's been a pleasure to speak with you. This episode's associate producer was Francesca Awotundun, senior producer was Mike Letourneau, and executive producer was Chris McClellan. Interview recorded by Robin Edgar. Ask AI includes this podcast, a helpful chatbot, and live events. For more information, please visit our website at askai.org. Do you have questions about artificial intelligence and workplace automation? We'd love to help answer them. Send your queries to podcast at askai.org or tweet to AskAIOrg.